Hi there, and welcome back to the Community Strategy Podcast. My name is Deb Shell. I'm a creator turned community builder. After launching my online community in 2020, I have a passion for online events and bringing people together. I now consult business owners and leaders just like yourself who have a message, their life's work, or a vision for helping others transform through their online courses, cohorts, or memberships. On this interview style podcast, you'll hear conversations with community leaders, passion for bringing people together online. Our goal is to provide you with interesting conversations to inspire you to build, launch, and grow an online community with energy, confidence, and purpose. Let's get started. Hi there, this is Deb. Welcome back to the Community Strategy Podcast. I am your host here, and today I have a very special guest. I have been a uh, community member uh, of his community for quite a while, and I'm going to let him introduce himself, but Alex uh, Sanfilippo is here today to talk to us about community building, how he's using Muddy Networks, and podcasting in general, and take it away, Alex. <laughs> Deb, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and honestly, I'm honored. Like I know you, like just in the timeline of your podcast, like I've been listening to basically the audio version of your book, right? So I've been able to yeah. do that. It's just an honor to like be on the show after that. So love what you're doing here. And uh, I think you're just a brilliant community strategist. So again, thankful to be here. And I, I know that's not what you asked a little about me. My name is Alex Sanfilippo. I run a company called Podmatch, which connects podcast guests and hosts together for dates, as we call it, right? <laughs> Actually interviews, but we call it dates because uh, it works just like a dating app. But it's a, it's a really fun thing. It's built a lot of community. So we actually added, as Deb said, a community to that. So we have our actual community, which is built in Mighty Networks. And it's just a way for, again, these podcast guests and hosts to be able to find ways to collaborate. And of course, guests to collaborate together and hosts to collaborate together as well. And the whole idea here is just, can we elevate both sides of the mic can we get out there and serve people together so that's what we're doing here and the community aspect of it is huge like that's kind of the core of what we do i believe yes i uh thank you so much for sharing a couple of things about the book um uh, you've been on this podcast it was been a quite a while um so returning back here again and you got the benefit of like listening to the audio version reading the book or whatnot so i'm super excited about that but i don't want to dive into that quite yet i want to just learn a little bit about you as far as like the money networks and was that an automatic decision i think we talked about it before but i just want to like recap it for other people like how did we land on community money networks for you yeah um i don't remember the year it was 2018 or something uh that's not when i was on the podcast that's when i found money networks but back then dad there wasn't many like circle wasn't a thing yet and that's like kind of like one of the big names in the space it was like one of the few options, I think. And uh, so it really like kind of stood out because I, I didn't see much more, but I also like the fact that they had, like the company is run through its own community, which I like. So it's like, they're using Mighty Networks to teach you Mighty Networks to run Mighty Networks. And like, that really just stood out to me. So yeah, I think it was 2018 when I landed with it and just, it made sense to me. I like it. Like it, my, my, the way my brain works is like, this makes sense and decide to stick with it long-term. And I, that's maybe not a super scientific reason, but there wasn't many options when I started. And now I know, and you would know better than anyone, like there's probably maybe better options, but for me, this has worked really well and our community loves it. So it's, it's been good. That is so great to hear. Yeah. There, there has been an entourage of lots of community platforms during, you know, the pandemic, post pandemic. So there's lots of communities and and some of them, you know, stay around and then some of them disappear and, See, and all that's that. That's another stuff. thing, Deb, I'm glad you said that. That's a concern of mine. Like Mighty Networks had raised capital. Not, that's not necessarily doesn't mean they're going to make it, but I could tell that they were in it to stay. They had yeah. a good CEO and founder and stuff. And so I, I'd be terrified of building a community somewhere that's just going to disappear. So I'm going to cut you off. I think that's really important not to go with just the most trendy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's such a good point too, because honestly, people are like Clubhouse. Do we do Clubhouse anymore? Not really. And that was just like five minutes. It felt like five minutes ago that we were talking about Clubhouse. Right? So yeah, it, I think that's a good point to say that. I mean, I didn't choose the platform because I was comparing. I just had been a member on this platform in 2018 and I decided when I launched my community in 2020 that I just was automatically going to use their platform. And I really love that there's a women, a woman founder and that it's, it's really supportive and creative. And her, Gina's message is very much aligned with, you know, purpose and uh, community building and not just about 
transactions. Like people are not transactions, right? That that right there is so important to me. Like again, going back to being able to like a community that uses its own platform to build community. Like you can see the culture that they're trying to claim they have, right? I'm doing air quotes there because yeah. some people are like, oh, we're built for this. But it's like, you can't really see into the culture of the company. So you don't know. But with them, I could tell because like Gina was the one responding to me at first at times. She came on my podcast, right? And like, and that made me realize, I'm like, wow, these people actually mean what they say. Like they care about community. Like even the core of their business is community. And I, I think- Here's the thing, like if you want something to succeed, you got that has to be in its DNA, right? So that they know how to build something for community because they built their company on community. It sounds a little bit meta, but the reality is that's why it's worked so well, I think, for me and for so many others. Yeah. Um, so about a year ago, we're recording this in November of 2023. About a year ago-ish, um, Mighty Network switched from the previous generation to like a 2.0 version or whatnot, if you want to call it, of the transition with spaces about a year ago. It was like big December, actually. Um, do you re recall that time? I do. And I, I wasn't one to like complain. I just kind of dealt with like what they had or didn't have. But I knew, I, I told Alicia this, my wife, I was like, man, and this was about a year and a half ago. I'm like, they're really like, it's almost doing everything like we would really need it to do to make sense for our members. And I remember telling her that like some people get confused, they get lost. Right. And I'm like, I, I don't really know what the solution is, but th it just hasn't worked. I and mean, they released what they call quote unquote spaces. It literally fixed everything. So not only did it do everything we needed to do to actually support our members well, um, but it actually gave us more functionality than we even anticipated. So that update was, was huge. Like absolutely for us, it turned into a pretty good solution to being the ideal solution plus some. Yeah, I think, you know, the magnitude of how Mighty Network has grown in the last three years, it's very much a website-ish platform, you know, like where, you know, there's other platforms that are just really strictly focused on community and, and that's their their main thing. And, and Mighty Networks is that, but it also over the last couple of years has like had such incredible growth with their product team and all these features that they're coming out with. Um, it's crazy, right? I don't know if you have any thoughts around the features besides the spaces integration. Yeah. One, one of the things that I've really enjoyed is the, is the, the courses, they give you the option to like have basically, I think courses is what they actually call it in the platform. I forget some of the technical terms, but it literally is for building out courses. And I like that you can keep comments in it, keep places for people to, to have communication. Cause one of the, my issues when I was looking for like, I wanted to build courses too. And I was like, Oh, you can do that in money networks. That's great. And I, I actually was looking for something that would allow me to like talk with people taking the course. And I get that a lot of people don't necessarily want that. Like they want it to just be like, pay for my course, <laughs> mm -hmm. not for access to me. Right. But like everything, like I said, that we do at Podmatch is all around this idea of community. And so I felt it would be very off brand and off of some of my main core values of making myself accessible for members. So like we built courses in there, which we absolutely love with ways for people to comment in there. Um, beyond that, we use like the, uh, the, the way I have events. So like any, like even if our members are having like a corner. So glad you event. already jumped to the event thing. Cause oh, I was I didn't about mean to, to jump ahead. <laughs> I know I was just about to say like, I can't forget how you do the events because I love how you set up and organize your events and how you run them. So I want, I'm glad, sorry, I interrupted, but I'm just no, no, excited. Good. <laughs> yeah, do you, do you want me to jump into how we we do that? Is yeah. that helpful? Okay. Um, yeah. So for us, we run a quarterly virtual event, and that's for our, our entire community. We bring everyone together. So we run it inside of what's called a space, specifically one that's like a group. So it, it is a group, and we do charge for access. So anyone can come to the entire community at large, right? The Podmatch community you can join that, and it's all free. And then if you're like, okay, I want to attend, let's just say the January event. I want to be in that event then you would pay and then we give you access into it, which is just kind of, it looks like a repeat of the rest of the, the community, which is what I like, Deb. I like the fact that it doesn't look like I've entered a new world where I'm like, okay, I have to learn all this now, right? No, it has the same look and feel, but we then inside this group, we create individual events for each of the sessions that are gonna happen with links to access them. And again, that way people can have communication, they can chat. So we actually bring all the speakers into that room even. Uh, and so like we do live Q and A during the actual event. Um, but also, if someone has a follow-up question, they can go back to that event in Mighty Networks and say, hey, Deb mentioned this. What do you, like, what did she mean, right? And Deb can mm -hmm. then go in there and respond directly. And so the whole idea, and we have a feed as well and a place for people to chat. The idea is just, can we somehow foster community in everything we do? And one of my problems with, like, virtual events is that 
if especially like when we're just using zoom we just have the chat and it, it's you don't really know who's there what's going on right we wanted to change that we wanted people to be able to com connect build community so there's like there's a chat that you can do when it's when the uh, event is going on. There's a chat you can do before and after. There's a way you can do full on posts. You can go to the events and comment, right? The whole idea is can we, again, keep this idea of community involved in everything we do. And that's kind of what we do the events. So it's a paid section of our free community that then allows you to access 13 different events that happen throughout that day that make our, our, our virtual event. And it's not just you pay for access, get access that one day. If you buy it today, you've got access up to the event. And even after for the replays, you can still have an ongoing conversation, which we regularly see. Yeah, it's it's a great structure because a business wise, you're only doing, you know, four a year. So planning, you know, prepping, um, promoing those, um, you know, if you're doing a monthly, for example, or something like that consistency, then it would be even more. So I love that you kind of just made a decision about having it a quarterly versus like a monthly or something like that. Cause a lot of other communities either do weekly or monthly events. And so I wanted to ask you specifically if that was a you know, purposefully designed that way for your business model. Um, and then, you know, just the way you run it as far as like you pre-record, pre you have pre-recorded interviews to some extent, and then you have some live conversation. And I was just interested to, to see, you know, was that a structure that you created? So that, yeah, that's that structure. Um, I, I mean, I, I can't ever say anything's original. I, I will say I hadn't seen anyone do this before, but I just knew what I wanted to experience at an event. So the way we, the format we do it in is that there's 13 sessions, all of which have a pre-recorded video from the speaker. There's one solo one for me, two where I interview an opening keynote on the state of where everything we do is podcasting, right? So it's like about the state of podcasting, a closing keynote that's more motivational, but also from a podcast guest or host. And then there are 10 in between, five that are in the guest track. So five, they're specifically for podcast guests and five happening at the same time they're for podcast host in the host track. And again, so the video is pre-recorded. So there's 13 of them, but we do a live Q&A right afterwards. So I'm one of the two MCs. And then right after and during the video, people are asking questions. We bring other people on stage. We have them ask their questions. If Deb is there, Deb takes literally the world's greatest notes, um, So uh, which we always appreciate. So you're taking notes along the way and sharing it with other people. And and with, what's beautiful about this is we decided to do quarterly because we wanted it to be um, 13 weeks of our podcast content. So the week after the event's over, the next 13 weeks, we release one podcast episode a week, and it's one of the 13 sessions that happen there. So for the next 13 weeks, it rolls into that. And then the whole idea is let's bring everyone back to the next quarter event. So every basically 90 days, right? People are coming in for, for the event and the community loves it. It's super fun. Most people are repeats, right? People show back up. So it keeps on growing and stuff like that, but that's kind of the whole format. So again, it's, it's a pre-recorded video followed by a live Q and a with an MC and the actual speaker who's there all in 30 minute time blocks. So everything has like a 30 minute time block. So the whole event is fast. It's four and a half hours from start to finish, including what we call our gratitude session where we just bring everyone up on stage at the end, whoever wants to talk. And uh, it's absolutely a blast. We, it, we love it. And it's all like without mighty networks, it wouldn't work. And I'll say this, we connect one other tool. So we use mighty networks plus an app called Demio. Uh, and Demio is the actual webinar software that we use. So we like um, people click from Mighty Networks in the community to uh, Demio, and that's where they're watching it get streamed and stuff. So I don't want to get too technical on all that, but that's kind of all the, the tools we use, just those two things together. No, it's great. Um, I love the business model of how you're like really using this content you know, in so many varied ways between the podcast and the actual event. And then people can see these recordings later in time. And I know that I've really enjoyed the interactiveness of the chat. I think that's the one of the best parts of uh, the sessions for me is like having seeing this interaction from people like reacting to whatever is being said in the video and then being able to ask the speaker right after that about something they said or or whatnot. So I think it's just really it's really engaging is what I would say. It's one of the most engaging events I, I've attended, you know, as far as a virtual event. So uh, I just, yeah, I just think you do a really great job with that. So I wanted to, to mention it. And I'm sorry, that's the last one. <laughs> yeah, me too. Think, we didn't have our our our, our native note taker. It, it's okay. You'll be I back. I think that was but, like uh, the first one I missed in, like for a year. I feel I like so. I did them like yeah. each quarter. Yeah, yeah, you, you did. And we, we didn't have our note taker. So um, I don't know if anyone even stepped up. So uh, we had a little bit of a gap, but that's okay. You know, uh, that's but, all right. yeah, it, it's a fun thing. We really enjoy that. And again, it's all around this idea of community like we're talking about here. So I appreciate you mentioning how engaging it is. That's like a very, very important element for yeah. us. Yeah. So I, I love the strategy around that. 
uh, what do you feel like uh, is has helped you with your community building, you know, process? Like as you've tried to, you know, grow this me the the membership, even though you have a free membership, it's basically a freemium where you have a free space, and then um, you you know you give opportunities for people to to pay something to attend an event, right? Yeah, it's it's something that actually I pulled from chapter ten of your book. So I'm gonna give your book a shout out here, chapter ten, talking about keeping members coming back for more. Um, you have to do that. Like you can't, I think some of us, we like build a community and we're like, oh, I'm going to get them to join. And then they join like, cool, wash my hands. Who's next. Right. And like, we forget, like people can leave as quickly as they show up. Sure. You might have like the number of like, cool. Now I have 105 people or 106 people, whatever it is. Right. But if all of them are inactive, what, what's the point? Right. And so you have to keep them coming back for more. So for me, um, kind of following your lead on this, Deb, it's just been like creating content that's really engaging which I think scares a lot of people because you assume, okay, like I got to build graphics and do all this fancy stuff. But the reality is once you're in a community together, people are looking for a human, right? Like they're looking for something that doesn't feel like a show anymore. They're looking for something that feels like, oh, Deb is real. Deb is just like me, right? Like <laughs> lives in a house, likes to talk, builds community, right? Like not like, oh, rock star, builds out the coolest graphics and stuff like that. So I try to avoid all that stuff and I just share my own stuff. And sometimes on a Saturday, I post when my wife and I are going to go play soccer. We we our, our uh, pod match sponsors a couple soccer teams in a local league here, and so someone's like, "Hey, Alicia's playing with our like with the logo on. Like, love all you guys in the community. Hope to see you soon. Like, or talk to you all next week, right?" And people love that. It brings them coming back because they feel like, "Oh wow, I'm actually like I'm part of something here," which I guess in the day should be what a community is about, right? So, like you say in chapter ten, it's about doing something that keeps them coming back for more, and that to me is absolutely the biggest thing. You have to do that consistently. You can't show up for three days and then disappear for three weeks, right? You've got to always be there showing people that that's your hub. And another thing people get wrong with this, Deb, is they keep, if, if okay, here's the thing. If the community is an afterthought for you as the leader, it's going to be an afterthought for everybody else. If you don't think about that first, you're like, oh, shoot, I forgot to post in the community. If you're saying that, people are also probably saying, oh, I forgot to check that, right? You want it to be first and foremost in your mind. And I, I, I those points right there have been what have helped me move the needle the most in keeping a very engaged community. Yeah, I think the consistency when you're talking about going one quarter and another quarter, people have something to look forward to. And then you're like, you know, gaining new people probably through the podcast because they're listening and you're talking about the next event is here. Here's like get the show notes to register for like, you know, the winter one. So I feel like that's a good circle for you to keep coming back around and and hopefully, you know, keeping those members because they know that this is where they can get the best podcast information. Um, I would say I wanted to ask you, what was your favorite part of the book since you did bring it up um, from the creator to community builder book? You know, I, I mean, I don't mean to just go back with what I just said, but I, I love the idea of keeping your members coming back for more because like we, that's what, that's what, like, I feel like is the hardest thing for people, but really you kind of frame it in a way that makes it not so complex because it doesn't have to be so complex. And I think that that's the thing that scares all of us because, okay, it, it kind of blends to a couple different points, but like the thing is, this is about creating content and that's what it takes to keep members coming back for more, but we're scared to create more content because we don't create it right. It should be natural. It should be easy in your community building. So again, I think that, I think the whole book is worthwhile. I love that you covered on this podcast. Like anybody can go back and listen to like the main notes from it and stuff. Right. Um, and I mean, get the book, but that, that's helpful, like a good place to start, right? But I think that just having this mindset of, I've got to keep these people coming back for more, which means I need to serve them and add value. That really spoke to me and stood out more than anything else, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, again, it's it's not just content for content's sake. It's content for based on your feedback from your members, what you're learning from them as you're building relationships with them through time. And um utilizing the shared wisdom of the space, right? Of the people who are there. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. And I think that, yeah, ultimately it's collaborative, I guess. Right. Like you could say <laughs> that, like you want, I don't know. So like I mentioned how I'll share up playing soccer, like a great thing I can do at the end of that is ask people how many goals they think she's at least she's going to get, you know, like, or something like that. Just so again, like you're, you're inviting people to be part of it. And yeah, so it is, it is collaborative. And if I have a space to work, on the most, like you asked what I like the most, that's what I like the most, but where I need the most work and help myself is in the idea of fostering a way that I encourage other people to do the same, to make it more collaborative feel. And I, I'm aware of like that weakness, thanks to you, right? But it is an area I'm actively seeking to grow in. So yeah, um, my favorite part, again, bringing people back from where I need to work is the collaborative mindset that we need to have. 
Yeah, I think uh, so hard. Sometimes we feel like, especially if you're charging money for something, you know, you feel like they're coming here for content, but in reality, people want connection. The, they, they might like your podcast or your book or whatever it is that's bringing you together, but at the end of the day, they really just want to connect with each other and with you. And it, it's not always about the host. So I, I mentioned that, I think, at the beginning of the book about saying, to, you know, making a point to say that, you know, an ecosystem, what I call an ecosystem is more about um, how we learn from each other as humans, basically, because we're all humans living on this planet that's spinning, <laughs> you know? It's so true. You know, I actually just attended a, a big fundraising event and um, it was a paid event and it was, it was expensive. And the hosts of it was the first time doing this and they felt like they had to entertain. They had to like have a, it needed to be like an amazing thing. You were just like in awe the entire time. And the biggest piece of feedback they got was that there wasn't enough time to network. And there's probably 500 people in the room and everyone's like, man, everyone at every table is so, so like interesting. And so what they wanted the host to do was not burn themselves out on sharing everything they could. They wanted them to be like, hey, take the next 30 minutes and eat and have fun and talk to people at your table, right? And I, I think with an online community, it's the same thing. Like you're saying, like there needs to be some, people are not just expecting you to entertain them, right? That's not what people want. If they want that, I'll be real. They're going to go to a streaming service and watch something. They want to yeah. feel like they're part of something. They want to feel like their voice is heard. And I, I think that that's the beauty of online community. Fostering that well is difficult, but it can happen with time, with empathy, and just your devotion is showing up consistently and keeping it top of mind. Yeah. So great. Uh, we're coming up. I know we're, I was trying to keep it short and I'm, I have a hard time with that. I know I'm a long form writer and I'm also a long form podcaster. Uh, I'm a but... long form speaker, so we have nothing going for us. <laughs> so I'll just ask you one more question and that's about podcasting. Um, if I'm sure there's some podcasters that are listening today. Um, if you could say one thing to me as a podcaster and to the rest of the podcasters listening, what is the best tip you've got or thing that you, you think we should do as a podcaster in 2024? Yeah, find a way to build community among your listeners. Uh, your listeners are excited. They love to hear you. But if you can find a way to bring them together and introduce them, here's why that's so powerful. It's because now if, if Deb and I met through somebody's podcast and be like, oh, yeah, we were actually both listeners to this podcast and they like linked us up. People be like, what? You listen to a podcast and introduce you to a human? Like, what is that, right? It's almost unheard of. But the few shows that are starting to pick up on this and understand the importance of that are becoming the most valuable, fastest growing shows. And maybe not fastest growing to like biggest numbers, not going to become the number one show. But I say fastest growing, they're building a true tribe of fans because people are like, no, they're not just a podcast. They connected me, right? And so the podcast hosts, they become the master connector among their listeners, discovering that and figuring out how to actually work that. That's a big trend we're going to see in podcasting because more than ever, Deb, you know how it is. People are looking to feel part of something. In podcasting, the days of it being fully one-dimensional, people listening through an app and never talking to the host, I feel like those days are starting to be behind us. People want something else from that person because they trust them. And nothing is better than a connection from somebody that you trust, right? So um, that's the big thing I'd say. Find a way to start getting ahead of that. Right now, there's no roadmap for that. Start getting creative. Start thinking of how you can do it. Start talking to your listeners. They might have ideas, right? And see what you can come up with because I believe there's something beautiful to be had right there. You are amazing because if you read the beginning of the book, you ex you exactly described my experience with Location Indie because um, Travis uh, is the host of Extra Pack of Peanuts and Jason is the host of Zero to Travel. And that's how I found Location Indie because I was looking for travel podcasts, started listening to them, bought their course thing, entered their community. And like six months later, I'm hanging out with Jason Moore from Zero to Travel and in a freaking Uber to go hiking. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that, see, that that is amazing. I love it. It, it. It's like the best experience. And then you see them as real, you're like, oh, it's Jason and Trav, you know, we're just hanging out. <laughs> you know, Travis has a gigantic, gigantic podcast. This is like one of the top podcasts for travel yeah, in the here's, travel here's space. What, here's what I wasn't going to bring up, but now that, now that you went there, I have to. <laughs> You mentioned it in your book, right? Like, again, how impact, like if you're the host and someone writes a book and they mention the experience they had with you as a podcaster, it's like, wow, that's that's huge, right? So Deb is a lifelong fan uh, of that that group, that podcast, right? Those people are now in their community, friends of theirs as well. And that all started because this podcaster figured out how to actually make that connection happen, right? Um, I would love for someone to write a book and reference 
me or my podcast in it, right? Because it impacted them because I was able to, to build that relationship. So um, yeah, I mean, obviously we kind of centered this whole thing around your book, but I think it's just that good and it flows really well with where I see podcasting going. Yeah, I think you're in the book. I think I have a link to your episode, to your podcast in the book. There's URLs for people listening. If you don't have the print version, there are URLs, or I'm sorry, URLs. <laughs> call those things qr codes um, qr codes the qr codes are uh on in the book so you can i think i it. missed that but if that's the case thank you i am totally honored did, did, if that actually <laughs> maybe I'm, i must have missed that i, I am feel so like sorry i'm pretty sure it's in a, like there's a couple things my editor took out um so i can't be 100 percent sure but i'm pretty sure that it's in there uh, I wanted to make sure that it was interactive and I wanted to try to get people back to listening to these episodes because I feel like we listen to, you know, just the newest episode and, you know, and then like, but there's so many great things that you can learn from these episodes that I did when I was like less familiar with podcasting. <laughs> so they might not have been like, that great for my end, but like the speaker was great. <laughs> You've always been good, Deb. That, that's the secret. <laughs> so. <laughs> I did not know that I had a natural podcasting voice and somebody said, man, you just, that's what you, yeah. I'm like, okay, <laughs> um, cool. Well, so much uh, thanks and gratitude for you, the work you do and just everything. Um, Cause your platform is amazing. I've been trying to get up that little ladder um, to try to reach it, but it's tough, man. Cause there's a lot of podcasters in there to, to reach your top 10, but uh, I've been trying and I'm just thankful for the community and the events you run and that you shared some things about Muddy Networks with us today for other people who are, you know, trying to figure out platforms and technology. And those are some good tips that you provided. So for all of those things, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. Truly an honor to be back. And uh, congratulations again on all your success in community building. You're really leading the way with this. So um, I'm just honored to get the opportunity to be in community with you, really. Me too. I'm lucky to, that you're in my community and I'm super excited for the next, when is the next event? Do you know? Oh, don't ask me that on the spot. It, it's somewhere. Pod, podtalks.fm has it. So <laughs> I'm not certain though. <laughs> uh, go to pod, What's the best place for people to connect with you? Uh, everything I do is at podmatch.com. Uh, no matter how you reach out, I mean, you'll find the community there. You'll find me there. You're no matter how you reach out, you're going to find me. Let's put it that way. We try to keep it that way. We like it to be small. We like it to feel like a community. So podmatch.com has everything I do. Cool. And I will uh, have that in the show notes along with the link to the community to pod pros and, uh, anything else that we talked about, I'll put some things together, some notes, some of Deb's notes, cause I'll re-listen to this episode and I'll put Deb notes in the uh, show notes. <laughs> Love it. All right, for everybody who's listening and for you who's listening, uh, thank you for joining us to this uh, extra bonus episode of the Community Strategy Podcast Season 2. Uh, if you are um, driving out and about or walking or whatever you're doing right now, I hope you're finding a little bit of calm in your day, evening, morning, afternoon, or Wednesday at 4. Find calm and take care until the next time. Bye. Bye.